Well, welcome back to GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. This week, we're going to work with geoprocessing tools for analyzing polygons. So let's use the Create Fishnet tool to make four square polygons. So each square will be a width of 10 and a height of 10. And we'll make two rows and two columns, which will produce our four squares. Our origin will be 0, 0, and our y-axis will be straight north. So 0, and then any value greater than 0 to go straight north. And then we will create polygon instead of polyline. And then we'll execute that geoprocessing tool. So for now, let's remove our points from our data frame. And let's go to geoprocessing results. And we'll use the same create fishnet tool to create lines. So I name my output lines, and then we'll change our origin. So go over five units and up five units. So then we want to go straight north. So straight north would be five and any value above five. And then we'll create polygons and then just OK, or polyline and then OK. So next, let's add a field for our square polygons called polygon ID. And we'll add a field to our lines called line ID. So then we'll have a unique ID value for each feature. So then we can use the field calculator. Let's say polygon ID is equal to the object ID plus some arbitrary number. And then we'll symbolize by polygon ID. So if we go to properties and then symbology categories, so we'll do for every different polygon ID, give it a different symbology. And then we do the same thing with lines. So the line ID is going to be equal to the object ID plus some arbitrary value. So I'll use 200 as an example. And then we'll symbolize our lines by line ID. And let's make all our lines thicker. So what we could do is select our lines. So if I hold the shift key down, I select them all. And then right mouse click properties for selected symbols. And we'll give them thicker. So then we can change whatever symbol we want if they're too similar. So for example, we've got some greens. Let's change 206 to some other symbol. So one typical question might be, how many lines are there within each polygon? So for example, you might have parcels and you want to know how many different electric lines are going into each parcel. Or you might have watersheds and you want to know how many streams are in each watershed basin. So we can use a spatial join tool to answer that question. How many lines are within each polygon? Since we want to know how many lines are inside each polygon, we're going to have our target features as our polygon and we're asking the question about our lines. And that will output a new polygon feature class. I named it lines count. And then we don't really need shape length, which is the perimeter of each polygon. And we don't need shape area, which is the area of each polygon. And we don't even need the length of each line. So the result will be a polygon, how many lines are in each polygon, and then the polygon ID. And then intersect is the match option. So the result is indeed polygons and let's apply the same symbology to our output. So if we go to symbology and then we'll import the symbology from our square polygons. So there is our polygons and we'll have a new field and the field is called join count. And that is how many lines are inside each polygon. So if we open up our attribute table, this polygon has two lines inside it. 
all the way down to our fourth polygon. This polygon has one line, two lines inside it. You notice that it doesn't tell us what lines are inside each polygon. So you would think, well, let's change our target to our lines and then transfer the polygon information to our lines. So let's try that with spatial join. So our target now is our lines, and we're going to transfer the information about the square polygons, the polygon ID, to our lines. So that way we'll know for each line what polygon is that line sitting in. So some lines are not even in a polygon, so they get a join count of zero, no polygon ID, which is good. However, this line, it can't tell us what polygon it's sitting in. It could be it's sitting in both polygon 101 and polygon 102. And we get the incorrect information that it's in polygon 101. So the reason why we don't get the correct information is what we would have to do is cut this line right here and say this line from here to here is in polygon 101. And then this line from this location to this location is in polygon 102. So the spatial join tool is not the correct tool for this type of analysis. What we have to use is the intersect tool, which can actually cut within each polygon to get us the correct information. So that's what we'll talk about and use in the next video session, the intersect tool for working with polygons.